In this Blender tutorial, we're going to be creating this procedural rusty metal material. Now, if you'd like to help support me and also get the project files for this tutorial, then you can do that over on my Gumroad and Patreon with the links in the video description. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to show you the setup that I have. So I just have a sphere right here in the center of the scene, and then I just added a camera and pointed it right at the sphere. And then for the lighting, I also added this Photo Studio 01 1K HDR, and this is on HDRI Haven. So I'll leave a link in the video description if you'd like to download the same HDRI that I'm using. So I just added this in as an environment texture in the world, and then just added this HDRI. So right over here, I'm going to go into rendered mode just so that we can see the preview of the material as we create it. And then right over here are our shader nodes. So I'm just going to click on new and I'm going to call this material rusty metal. And then one more thing before we get started, I am going to be using the node wrangler add on. So if you don't have that enabled, you can go to edit and then go to preferences. And then right over here on the add-ons, you can just go to the search here and start searching for a node and then just check mark this node wrangler add-on. So this add-on is built into Blender, so you can just check mark that and then I'll show you how we're going to use it while we're setting up this material. So we're going to be creating two different shaders. We're going to create the metal shader and then we're also going to create the rusty shader and then we're going to mix them together and tell Blender where we want the rusty parts to be and where we want the metal parts to be. So let's go ahead and make the metal first. So what I'm going to do is turn this metallic all the way to one and you can see that that already looks more shiny and looks more like metal. Now I want to make the base color kind of a gray color so I'm just going to turn it down make it a gray color but you can really make it any metal material that you want. I'm just going to go with gray and then the roughness here I'm going to change this to somewhere around a 0.25 so 0.25 and you can see that now that metal is a lot more shiny and I think it looks a bit nicer. So the metal is really smooth right now, but I want to add just a very, very tiny bit of bump or warping just to make it a little more realistic. So to do that, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Just drop the noise texture right down here and then using a feature with the node wrangler add on. If I have this selected and then press control T, that's going to add this mapping and texture coordinate. Now from generated, I actually want to change this to object. So I'm going to plug the object into the vector mapping right here. And that way the noise texture is going to be placed around your object a little bit better. And then using another feature from the node wrangler, you can hold down the control and shift key and click on nodes. And then it's going to give a preview of what that node looks like. So I want this scale to be a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to change it to maybe around a six, just so that we have a little bit more detail. And then I'm going to plug the factor into the normal. Now, when we do that, if I now control shift and click on the principle to preview it, you can see that it's black. And that's because we need to convert this to normal data because you can see this is a gray circle, whereas this is a purple circle. And so this needs to be converted to data that the normal can use. So to convert this to normal data, I need to press shift A and I'm going to search for a bump node. I'm just going to drop the bump node right here and then we don't want it to go into the normal we want this to go into the height now you can see that it looks like the metal is really bumpy now it's way too bumpy right now i just want to make it very subtle so the strength here i'm going to turn this way down to something like a point 0.015 so very very subtle but if you look really up close you can see that it's just a little bit warpy Whereas if I just unplug this, you can see without that, it's just kind of smooth and simple. It's very subtle, but it just adds a little bit more detail and makes it slightly warpy. So that's going to be it for our metal material. I think that looks pretty good. Um, so what we could do is we could actually join these together in a frame. Uh, this is totally optional. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I thought it'd be pretty cool to do in the tutorial. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a frame. Just drop the frame right here. And then what we can do is we can actually add nodes in this frame and it'll just make it kind of easier to kind of move it around. Now this texture coordinate and mapping, I want to use this for other textures that we're going to be using later on in the video. So I'm actually going to drag these two up here, but then I'm going to box select all these three nodes and I'm going to drag them and drop them inside the frame. Now, if I click on the frame, I can drag it around and it's going to drag all these nodes around. And then right now it says frame, but we can actually edit uh, what this is called. So if you press N, that's going to open up this side panel here. And if you select the frame, you can see it has a name and a label. I'm going to call this metal. And then I'm going to also make the label metal as well. 
So now you can see that it says metal right there and we can kind of drag this around. So using frames is just a really great way to keep your nodes organized, but it's totally optional. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. If you want to, you can just select it and delete it. Um, I just like using it sometimes to organize my nodes, but it's not going to change the look of the node setup. All right, so we've made the metal material. Now I want to make the rusty material before we add them together. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for another principal BSDF and I'm just going to drop it right here. And then again, I'm going to press shift A and add a noise texture. I'm just going to drop the noise texture behind this principle. And then again, I want this mapping to be plugged up to this noise texture because I want it to be using the object coordinates. So now I can control shift and click on this noise texture to preview what it's looking like. Now the scale here, I'm going to turn this up to like 60 because I want it to be very small. And then the detail, I'm going to turn this all the way up to 16 because I want it to be pretty detailed. And then the roughness, I found that something like a 0.6 uh, looks pretty good. Just adds a little more roughness. Okay, let's take the factor and plug this into the base color and then control shift and click on the principle. So you can see that it doesn't really look like rust because it's just white and gray. So what we need to do is add a node in here to edit the colors and tell it what kind of colors we want to have. So to do this, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp node. And I'm just going to drop the color ramp node right here. And now we can go ahead and edit these tabs and we can also slide the tabs around. So um, I'm also going to control shift and click on the color ramp just so that we can preview what that's seeing. So I'm going to take this black tab and just kind of drag it out just to make there be a little bit more black. You can see the more I drag it out, the more black is there's going to be. So I'm just going to give it a little bit more black. So I'm just going to bring it to somewhere around there. That's pretty fine. And then um, this, I'm going to click on the white tab and I'm going to bring this out a little bit as well. Now this one, I kind of want to be a light brown. So I'm going to click on this uh, tab right here and that's going to bring up the colors. And I'm going to bring this down kind of to the orange and then make it a lot darker. So that way it's kind of a nice light brown color, not super saturated. You can see if I bring it up here, it's a lot less saturated. Whereas if I bring it down here, it's going to be way more saturated. So a little bit desaturated, just kind of a light brown, something like that. Okay. Now I want to add another tab in here and I want to make this one a little bit more of a reddish brownish. So I'm going to click on the plus right here and that's going to add a new tab. I'm just going to bring the tab a little bit closer over here and then I'm just going to click on the colors and this one I want to be slightly more red. So I'm going to pull this a little bit more towards the red because I found that uh, rust does usually have a little bit of red. It's kind of a brownish reddish color. So I thought that would look nice if we just added a little bit more of a red color. It's still pretty brown, but just a tiny bit of red. And then you can just kind of make it a dark color. Okay, so if you look at it, you can see this is what mine looks like, and I think that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to control shift and click on the principle, and then you can see what it's doing. Now, right now it doesn't really look like rust, but if I click on the color and drag it into the normal, it's gonna add a lot more bump and will make it look a lot more like rust. Now again, we need to convert this to normal data, so I'm gonna press shift A. And I'm going to search for another bump node and just drop the bump node right here. And then we don't want to plug this up to normal. We want to plug it up to height and then it will convert it to normal data. And now you can see that's bumping out and it looks a lot better. Now it's way too strong right now. So the strength here, I'm going to change this to like a 0.16. I think that looks a lot better. And now you can zoom in here and you can see that there still is bump, but it's a lot more subtle. All right, now one more thing. I do want to adjust the roughness because you can see there's this roughness value here. I'm going to take the color and plug it into the roughness. Now when I do that, you can see it makes everything really shiny. Um, so I'm going to actually edit those colors to make it a lot less shiny. So I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to search for another color ramp. And I'm just going to drop the color ramp right in here. Now when I drop it in, it doesn't really do anything. But um, I'm going to actually switch these. So if I pull this out and then pull the white one in, you can see now I flipped it. And so now it's very, very rough. If I control shift and click on it, you can see that it's very white. And if I drag this over, you can see it's going to start to add more and more of that black color. So where it's white, it's going to be very rough. And where it's black, it's going to be very shiny. Because if I control shift and click on this, you can see right now it's white. So now it's going to be very rough, but if I drag this way down, you can see now it's going to be more and more shiny. And if I control shift and click on this, you can see those black parts are going to be more shiny. So I'm going to control shift and click back on the principle and really just play around with it and get it to how I like. Um, I want it to be pretty rough, but some parts I want it to be just a little bit shiny. 
and it just adds more detail and makes it look more interesting. So I think that looks pretty good and that's pretty good for me. Now later on in the video I am going to play around a little bit more with this shader and just make it look a little bit more interesting but for now that's going to be great. Okay so I want to put this in a frame so I'm going to select this frame press shifty to duplicate and just drop it right up here and then I can just box select all these nodes and I can drag them and drop them into the frame and that's going to add it in the frame. And then again, if I press the N key, it's going to open up uh, this tab right here. I can just change the name. I'm going to call this Rust and then right down here, Rust as well. And then I can press N to close that frame. So now we have the Rust right up here and then we have the metal right down here. So now I want to mix them together. So to mix these two together, I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to search for a mix shader. So mix shader, I'm going to drop it right down here. And then I'm going to take this BSDF, plug it up there, and then this one down here. So you can see that if I zoom in, it's actually kind of blending them together evenly, and that's really not what we want. Uh, if you drag the factor here, it's going to make it all metal or all rust. What we want to do is we want to tell it that some areas are going to be rust and some areas are going to be metal. So to do this, we're going to need to add another texture. So I'm going to actually drag this up so there's a little bit more room in between them, and then I'll press Shift A. And I'm going to add another noise texture and just drop the noise texture right there. And then again, I want the vector to be plugged up to the vector right here. Okay, now I can control shift and click on it to preview what it's looking like. So I want the rust to be very detailed. So I'm going to turn this all the way up to 16. And then the roughness, I'm going to change this up to 0.9. And we will play around with this value later. Uh, but for now, I'm going to change it up to 0.9. So now what I can do is I can take this factor and plug it into the vector factor of the mix shader and then if I control shift and click on the mix shader you can see it's starting to do something because what it's doing is it's taking the values of this noise texture and is telling it that some of the values are going to make it the metal and the other values are going to make it the rust um, but right now it's still way too subtle so what we want to do is we want to make this noise texture very contrasty so to make it very contrasty I'm going to press shift a and search for another color ramp just drop the color ramp right here and then I'm going to control shift and click on it to preview what it's looking like. So I'm actually going to drag these two values out towards each other and you can see that as they get closer and closer it's going to be a lot more contrasty. So what's going to happen is wherever it's black that's going to make it the rust and then wherever it's white that's where the metal's going to be. So if you want to have more rust, you can drag this kind of out this way and there's going to be more black. If you want there to be less rust, you can drag it over here and make the black more subtle. So really just get it to whatever value you want. You could play around with this. Now I can control shift and click on it and you can see that's what it's looking like. So now some parts are the metal and some parts are the rust. So just play around with the value and get it to the amount of rust that you like. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now if I zoom way in, it kind of just looks flat. So what I want to do is I want to make the where the rust is actually kind of going down into the metal. So what I can do is I can actually take this color ramp and add it into the bump of the rust and then that'll make the rust looks like it's going down into the metal. So I'm going to click on this bump here, press shifty to duplicate it and just drop it right in here and that's going to connect it up. Then I can take this color and stick it into the height. And then the strength here, I need to turn this all the way up to one. Now you can see, if you kind of zoom in here, like right over here, you can see now it looks like the rust is going down into the metal. And if you control shift and click on this bump, you can see that's what it's looking like. So it's adding all that detail in there and it looks pretty cool. And if I control shift and click on the rust now, you can see that's what the rust is looking like. So I'm going to control shift and click now on the final mix shader and just see how that's looking. So there are some things you can play around with. Of course, you can play around with this color ramp right here, and that's going to tell it how much rust and how much metal there's going to be. You can also play around with this roughness right here. So if I turn it down, you can see that it's going to make more bigger patchy areas of rust. So if you wanted to have bigger areas like that, you could totally do that. If you wanted to turn this value up, you can see that it's going to make everything more subtle and the rust is more evenly placed around the metal. So if you just want a tiny little bit of rust, just some little grainy rust, you could turn this all the way to one. You can see that's what it's looking like. If you want it to be just patchy, you could turn it down. I like somewhere around 0.9. I think that looks pretty good. That way there's some rust just in little bits and then there's also some patchy areas, but you can really play around with this and do whatever you like. 
All right, so I really like how that's looking, so I'm gonna render this out and show you the final image. And there we go, there is the final procedural rusty metal material. Again, if you'd like to help support me and also get the project files for this tutorial, you can do that over on my Gumroad and Patreon with the links in the description. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you in a future tutorial.